the final score. Wrexham 2, Stockport County 0. We're going to Wembley. This was, in many ways, so similar to last Saturday. The drama was terrific, and yet, in many ways, the opposite. This wasn't one of those mad basketball matches like we saw against Dover. This was the two best teams in the division by miles. And come on, let's be honest, we are facing off in the prime of their form with the place at Wembley and possibly psychological points to score when it comes to the title at stake and it was Wrexham who performed Stockport County were excellent Wrexham were a little bit better Stockport came into this game with 20 wins out of 21 20 out of 21 for goodness sake but Wrexham from the out were asking questions in a tight and tense sort of way I mean, the first thing's first, when a team is blowing everyone away that much, you, you want to make sure you can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and we established that early on. Admittedly, in the opening minutes, I'd say the Stockport were the better side. There weren't many chances created in the first ten minutes, except for one real chance, when the ball's dinked over the top of Exxon's defence cleverly by Hogan, and Stuttgart quickly running onto the ball on the left channel, failed to control his header. He was about a good 15 yards out, but he put it badly wide. He was one-on-one -on -one with Dibble. True done better. The turning point came in the tenth minute when the ref had to go off. I'm being facetious, but th th I think it did have a little influence. I, I said to Neil Williams, who I was commentating with, that we maybe needed a little break and a little recess. Um, the referee pulled the muscle, it looked like his car from where the ice pack was put under his tracksuit bottoms as he tried to carry on his fourth official. And I think we did use it quite well. Stockport had controlled possession a bit at that point. Both sides played the same shape. And Stockport were, yeah, just asking a few more questions. A debutant, one of the many players that brought in for the football league, of course, last week, um, Andy Cannon, who was anchoring the midfield but was very good on the ball as well and he was controlling affairs Sarcevic driving forwards from midfield is a dangerous player and he was also posing issues uh, and our midfield was having because we were starved of the ball and we weren't getting it back initially on the counter uh, was on the counter press we were sitting off a little bit and having to defend our area and stop it we weren't getting through we were defending well except for that one moment, but there was just that sense of Stockport had control of the game. That break, I think, just gave us a chance to reset and start doing the things we were looking to do, one of which was to try and find Mullen. Now, Stockport press hard, and they commit bodies up the pitch a lot, and we were leaving Mullen and Palmer up the pitch and trying to hit them, not a long ball style, but just trying to get that breakaway going when they had players committed into our half. And after that break, we started to do it. The first one was a very quick, cute free kick by James Jones down the right-hand side, Mullen on the right side of the box from a tight angle, smashed the ball across the goal mouth. I don't think he was trying to score. I think he was trying to cause problems. And Ben Hinchcliffe, who was outstanding in the Stockport goal, did really well to dive low to his right and hold on to it. If he'd spilled it, Hayden was lurking with a tap to in. So it continued to be even. It was tense and it was fascinating and Wrexham started to carve out other little chances. We also had a decent shot for the penalty. I, I've seen a replay. I'd like to see another one, if I'm honest. Toes with a long throw, half cleared. Young smashed in the shot from 25 yards as he does and it was blocked by Ash Palmer. Looked like it hit his arm. It looked like the question was... Is it in a natural position or not? I've only seen it from one angle, and I've only seen it quite quickly, so I could be wrong, but it looked like it was a good shout. The ref turned it down. At the halfway point of the second half, Stockport started a, a good little spell. Uh, Johnson, who was the more conservative of the wide centre-backs when it came to coming forwards, played a nice ball down the flank for catching the wing-back. He chipped an accurate cross in. Colin met it around the penalty spot with his head, but didn't make... Uh, the best job of finding the corners and Dibble was able to hold on to it fairly easily. And then another opportunity coming when Young made an error, uh, deep in his half, trying to switch, didn't get it right, quickly picking it up, driving into the box. It was a decent chance down the left channel, but he rather scuffed his shot and it dribbled wide of Dibble's post. Not that far wide, but Dibble had it under control and knew it was going just wide. Around the half hour, there was a peculiar, especially considering the quality of the game, scramble in the six-yard box of Wrexham's penalty area where neither side really dealt with things well. Wrexham weren't decisive getting rid of it and Stockport weren't decisive capitalising. The ball bounced around awkwardly before finally looping onto the roof of the net. It was a strange indecisive and, and low-quality affair from pretty much everyone concerned. But Wrexham finished the half um, trying to push forwards again. 
and had the best chance of the half for Wrexham at least when Davis did well squaring it to Mullen he carried this at the edge of the box and struck it well with his right foot it may have bobbled a little in front of Hinchcliffe because he didn't look like Mullen quite got hold of it as he'd wanted to but Hinchcliffe took no chances wisely and dived down low and just tipped it round the post it was very well placed it was going right in the bottom left corner however this tight tense fascinating game would suddenly take a wild turn in added time and it was added time in both halves that decided that Wrexham would go to Wembley and not Stockport because Stockport could easily have scored two in the added minute at the end of the first half firstly they were working situations well down the right. As I said, Johnson wasn't getting up the side of the pitch as much as maybe he wanted to from left-sided centre-back. But Hogan certainly was from right-sided centre-back. Spent a lot of time on Wrexham's half. It'd be fascinating to see a heat map, because he was centre-back, but he probably had not more touches in Wrexham's half. Um, he was getting forwards and creating overloads. Likewise, uh, Sartrovich was coming and helping Crankshaw, who was very clever on the ball on the right-hand side in terms of decision-making. He knew how to work in the overloads. He was a, a nice wide wing-back who caused huge problems without really taking people on or necessarily delivering balls into the box. And on one of these occasions, as the half was coming to a close, Sartrovich came round the outside of him took on Luke Young, managed to beat him, hit the goal line, ran along the goal line, fed it into Quigley, whose first touch was excellent, just dragged the ball out from his feet, looked like he was bound to score. He maybe didn't quite get hold of his shot, but he managed to place it wide of double, and massive credit to Hall Johnson, who managed to get around the back of the keeper and clear it off the line. But it was a desperate clearance. He had to stretch, he was off balance, and he could only poke it straight to Sarcevic, who'd carried his run on into the goal mouth and was now presented with a complete open goal. He took a touch on his chest, dropped down in front of him and on the half volley he somehow scooped it over the bar, I do not know how, I am not uh, a fan of rugby or an understander of rugby but it seems to me it was like a drop kick, except it came off his chest, it dropped down right in front of him, he leaned backwards and kicked for height and somehow put it over the bar from about 2-3 yards out, an incredible let off and not the last of the half, because almost straight away, Wrexham made a poor clearance. Stockport were at it again, quickly taking on the last defender, working a bit of space for himself, getting in the right channel and driving it across Dibble. Excellent work by Dibble to stick out his right foot and just get enough on it to poke it around the left-hand post. And Wrexham were able to come in and regroup at half-time on level pegging. Wrexham started the second half well and was playing the ball out from the back a bit more effectively and started to make chances. Palmer doing brilliantly to hold the ball up 30 yards out and then drive at the heart of Stockport's defence. He got deep into the penalty area. Maybe he should have pulled the trigger a tiny bit sooner, but he was virtually in the six-yard box when he went to shoot, and his namesake, Ashley Palmer, made an incredible saving tackle, sliding in from behind to dispossess him. Then it was McFadgen working a good ball down the left-hand side, Mullen cutting inside into the box, looked like he was going to come inside onto his right foot as he ran at Johnson and used him to line up a shot, curl it round him and around the keeper, but instead suddenly jagged back onto his left foot, making the angle tighter and smashed it with power across Hinchcliffe, who made a terrific agile save as it whizzed across him, managing to get his top right hand onto it and push it around the post. Then another opportunity... An amazing opportunity, 66 minutes, the moment that looked like it could define the game. Johnson, the centre-back, completely misjudging, turning just inside Wrexham's half on the left, trying to play a back pass and giving it straight to Paul Mullen, all on his own, through on goal. He had a little bit of distance to carry to take it to the edge of the box, and you know that's often what makes keep strikers start to think about the opportunity, maybe a bit too much, but we know that Mullen's brilliant in these situations. He carried it to the edge of the area. Hinchcliffe did well not to overcommit. He held his position, and Mullen drilled it across the keeper and just wide at the left post. What a shocked that Paul Mullen didn't finish from that sort of position or even hit the target. Wow, the watching Ryan Reynolds, who I believe has something to do with the club, must have been <laughs> horrified. I don't know why I said that then, I was not saying Ryan Reynolds is annoyed at Paul Mullen. Uh, what I did feel then, though, was Mullen was desperate to get another chance. He wanted to get another opportunity to make up for that. Two minutes later, 
Stockport nearly took the lead as well, just to rub things in even worse from Mullen Sarcevic. Again, looking threatening, feeding in the ex Wrexham striker, Connor Jennings. Stockport had made a double sub because the game was starting to slip away from them, and Jennings was lively and clever and tidy up front. He turns in the right channel, nice little piece of work to make room for himself, drove it in, trying to beat Dibble at his near post, and a, a great save by Dibble. This time with his left foot, just getting enough on it to deflect it over the bar. Jennings took it early and was in a great position. It was a good strike, a good finish and doubled it ever so well to get enough on to that that easily could have been a goal. Wrexham, though, were continuing to use Palmer, who was strong and occupying the centre-backs and really doing well up front. Mullen was buzzing around. Davis was starting to get into more and more attacking positions as the game got a bit more stretched. And the wing-backs were pushing on well. A whole Johnson full of energy. McFadden showing intelligence on the ball. It was 71st minutes. Hogan got himself a yellow card for a poor challenge on Ollie Palmer. I've got to be honest, and I think I'm probably overstating this, but it did cross my mind that it may have been a red rather than the yellow. Palmer done well to intercept and knocked it past Hogan and was running into space in the stopper area. It was a great position. Hogan clearly went in in order to take him out rather than try and play the ball. For me, he was very, very late. He was deliberately targeting the man, and his studs were up, and he hit Palmer in the, in the middle of his shin. And I thought it was a legitimate question whether it was a yellow or a red. The ref showed a yellow, probably just about right, but it was a, you know, it, it was weird that wasn't the question. Then Parkinson, Phil Parkinson off the bench, decided to make a, a decisive and bold gamble, a double substitution. Liam McElinden and Danny Jarvis coming on, James Jones and Callum McFadden coming off. Not a criticism, I don't think, of either of those players, but just the fact that Parkinson was bold and he wanted to the win and so he takes off Jones who done a hell of a lot of hard work in midfield and has a good game for my money and brings on Jarvis who is not going to do match Jones's work rate because no player matches Jones's work rate but is going to create and then also McElinden who is much more of a winger than a wing back so very bold against a side like Stockport it was all balanced to say we're going to take risks here we're going to bring on players who are going to get at you and it worked Wrexham did look sharp. McIlinden was very lively on the left. Jarvis was a really good out ball, just floating around in the, the, between the lines and, and just m m keeping breakaways coming. He won a couple of good set pieces with intelligent carrying of the ball when he had no support as well. And Wrexham started to look the more threatening team. In the first minute of added time, Wrexham nearly took the lead. The ball played in a long throw and once more half clears. Hall Johnson did brilliantly on the edge of the area to get on top of his volley as it rears high to hip height and smashed it as he sort of cut across it and a great save by um, Finchcliff again leaping high to tip it around the post very agile stop Wrexham again pushing on McElinden sweeping in across, misheaded by a defender. It fell for Davis, and he did well to keep on top of his shot and drive it from around the penalty spot. It looked like it was going in. Hinchcliffe did superbly to get down and just get a hand onto it and push it onto the post where it bounced off for a corner. Tremendous effort by Davis. Another fine save by Hinchcliffe. But ultimately, his luck couldn't last because <laughs> Mullen gets one chance against you. Fair enough. But when he gets another, he's liable to punish you. A um, long ball over the top, stop water, pushed up. Mullen in round the back of the fence, left-hand side. The keeper had to come out and commit. And what a finish from Mullen. Outside the box, around the left corner of it, lifting it beautifully over Hinchcliffe. Flicked the bottom of the bar as it went in, and Mullen had put Rex in my head. Stockport naturally had to then cast caution to the wind. We were already in the four added minutes. They took off the centre-back and put on a striker. And the short-handed defence that they had to work with was caught out a long ball over the top Hogan may be thinking about how to get the ball at the pitch more than how to defend the ball misjudged made a mess of it and presented it to Mullen all on his own in the D again Hinchcliffe totally stranded had to come out and do something and Mullen coolly flicked it over his head followed it up and volleyed it into the empty net Wrexham were going to Wembley Mullen loved it <sighs> There were scenes on the pitch afterwards of the celebrations. There were scenes after the crowd had gone because Ryan Reynolds spent ages on the pitch with the players celebrating and chatting. It was quite something, quite a day and quite a performance. And Wrexham are going to Wembley again for the second time in our history. I don't count the other two. Performances. Everyone's still up and to be counted. 
Dibble, though, I've got to say. I mean, Christian Dibble. After last Saturday, when, you know, with reflection, I think he got more criticism from me included, and I did say it to his face afterwards, so don't worry, I'm not a hypocrite, um, than he'd warranted. But he wasn't happy about that game last Saturday, and there was talk that Lee Camp could come in. I don't think that was ever really going to happen, if I'm totally honest with you. But he, he did still have to be counted today. Two, those two massive saves. If he hadn't made those two saves, Mullen doesn't score those goals because the game wasn't in a position where Stockport over-gambled and let Mullen in. If he hadn't made those saves, we don't score those goals. Simple as that. Massive, massive saves. He did ever so well. He was dominant in the box. There was never a, a concern about him at all. Brilliant performance by him. Across the back. Well, look, I'm going to make Mullen man of the match because he scored two goals and added time against the team in the best form you could imagine to send us to Wembley. How do you not make that man man match? He did play very well too, and the first goal was sensational. But if I just went on 90-minute performance, it would be Hayden. So Hayden was superb in, in the, the penalty area, intercepted everything, won everything with his head, used the ball intelligently. It was, it was prime red baron. It was absolutely brilliant. Tozo alongside, had a couple of moments where they were able to hurry him, but he generally was that regal leading figure in the middle, strong and solid and seeing off Madden well. And the left side of the centre-back, well, Clarence had a little bit of a rough time as well against Dover, as did Tozo. And let's be honest, I think that was mostly because Dover were bold and were outnumbering us at the back and stretching our defence. But Clarence, you know, didn't have the happiest of games, but he was excellent in this. Again, players trying to target him, no problem at all. He dealt with things very, very well indeed. Good on the ball and won a lot of good challenges and headers in the box. Really strong from Clav. a really strong comeback, like with Dibble. Very, very impressive. In midfield, well, Young is always full of energy, is always driving us forwards. Maybe he wasn't able to be quite as prominent because he had to do a lot of the diligent stuff when we didn't have the ball. Uh, just digging in, keeping our shape but was solid and strong. Jones, I thought, was quite impressive to his work rate. He was lucky to be taken off. It was a tactical thing to try and get Jarvis on to create. But Jones, I thought, should be uh, applauded for, again for his work rate. Won a lot of tackles. And Jordan Davis, again, was always bristling with threat. And it was tidy. He's got the physical side to his game as well. And uh, yeah, I, I thought he did well, especially in the second half when he came into the game, found space a bit more easily, was able to drive forwards and cause issues. I mean, the front two were superb. Like I say, I make Mullen mild the match for the for the symbolism and the significance of what he did for us. But not only that, I mean, he did play very well. He was buzzing around. He was lively. The centre backs, the three Stockport centre backs, did not enjoy themselves. They were troubled by the Wrexham strikers and Palmer again, a rock solid physical presence. Maybe through the middle, Ash Palmer was able to deal with him fairly well but when he pulled them to the wide centre backs he was bullying them in the air his touch is magnificent he's a fine player as you know and he played his part so we're going to Wembley of course we are of course we are <laughs> this is Wrexham 2021-22 of course we're going to Wembley what the hell did you expect ah oh, that was fun well I'm tempted to stay here till Tuesday but probably I shouldn't so not me indeed, because I left my coat in the car. Oh, you should listen to this, I'm on the ground. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't make that clear. So with the final score, brilliantly, of Wrexham 2, Stockport County 0. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC. Right. Ready for that pint, Ryan? Lovely. Let's do it. <laughs>